Hello everyone, welcome to Illustrator. So this is the another lecture of this series on complete RCC building design uh, using Midas Gen 2025. And uh, in our previous session, we have seen how to perform modal analysis. And if you remember, in our previous uh, session, when we were observing the modal results, we had some uh, percentage of uh, you can say uh, a, a torsional component in the first mode of vibration so if i just uh, show you the result again if i go to the table uh, uh, let me i think i have unlocked it let me just perform the analysis again okay and if i go to table vibration mode okay okay so here you can see the first mode has 61 percent of vibration in along x and have some 21 percent of vibration in the rotational component also right so and and the second mode uh, it seems uh, very very uh, translational along y right so but but there is a problem actually uh, we had uh, i mean i mean i have made a mistake due to which uh, this is the result that we are getting okay so what mistake i have made uh, i will just show you and if you have also made the same mistake while following my steps uh, please do correct it okay so the mistake is that uh, if i go to this display and if i go to boundary and if i click on support okay you see here by mistake i have assigned support to this story level nodes also due to which this particular uh, you can say uh, edge of the building is totally fixed here and the other part of the building is moving along this x direction right so that's why we are getting this torsional component so what i will do i will just delete this support so i'll just select these supports by taking this selection tool here i'll go to boundary uh, you can see here now this this boundary options are uh, deactivated as we have performed the analysis and we are in the post processing mode so i'll just have to click on this unlock button so that we uh, you can say come back to the uh, uh, pre-processing mode so i'll just unlock this and now i'll let me select it again and i will go to define supports i'll click on delete and i click on apply yes okay now i'll close it so now if i uh, uh, perform the analysis again so i will just click on here perform analysis it will take some time to complete the analysis and now if i go to uh, result and mode shape vibration mode shape if i see the first mode of vibration animate you can see the first mode of vibration is now transitional but if i if i show you the uh, you can say uh, the tabular result so results vibration mode you can see the first mode we are getting uh, transitional along x with 83 percent of uh, mass participation but in the second mode now uh, the rotational component is dominating right so that means now we have got uh, if i if i show you the mode shape again now in the second mode we have got torsional component so that means the second mode is not anymore a transitional mode of vibration it is it has become a torsional mode of vibration vibration or rotational mode of vibration right so now this is another another concern we just have to play around with the uh with the you can say orientation of the uh, vertical elements or we need to provide a corner wall so we just have to do some trial and error to fix this issue right so obviously we need to uh we can say have uh, we can say uh, transitional mode of vibration in the fundamental modes to have a better uh, uh behavior of the structure and to have the better results right so this this we will do i mean we'll do later so what i will show you in this particular lecture i will show you that how you can define response spectrum load case in this particular uh, software program right and i will also show you what uh, uh, how how i can say efficient this uh, program is and uh, uh, it has a very very you can say good option while defining the response spectrum to to uh, provide the angle of uh, excitation actually so uh, let us let us uh, let us uh, proceed with the response spectrum case so to define the response spectrum load case first of all what we need to define we need to define the response spectrum function okay so for that i will go to load i'll click on dynamic loads 
and here you will find this option called rs functions so i'll just click on rs functions so i'll click on add and here you will find this option called design spectrum i will have to select the uh, you can say code that will be using uh, i'll be uh, using is 1893 2016 i'll select the seismic zone 3 my soil type is medium soil damping ratio is 5 percent importance factor 1 and my response reaction factor is 5 maximum period you can go up to 10 seconds also but generally it is uh, 6 seconds we consider so i'll just click on ok so you can see this is my design response spectra so we have created the function right remember this this uh, response spectra it is a coefficient whenever we we see the spectra it is uh, spectral uh, acceleration coefficient by time period and when we multiply this coefficient with the uh, the g value uh, that means the acceleration due to gravity value then we get the spectral acceleration basically so that's why you have to provide this acceleration uh, uh, gravitational acceleration uh, value in terms of the current units right scale factor it is one as of now you don't have to change anything damping ratio of five and i'll click on okay uh i think okay uh okay no problem results will be deleted yes so you can see is 1893 2016 this uh, uh, uh response spectrum function we have defined right so i'll just close it now and then i'll go to rs load cases now i have to define the response spectrum load cases now before coming into the name i will just show you one option here the option is here we have uh, one option called this auto search angle and major and ortho so this major and ortho is nothing but the major principal axis or you can say major axis of excitation and the ortho is the perpendicular axis to the major axis right so if you consider the x direction as your principal major principal axis the y direction will be your uh, uh, you can say the other principal axis which will be perpendicular to the major axis right so it is just to the way of defining the two principal axis now we need to understand that the global x and y axis that we see in the software programs this may not be the principal axis of the structure the principal axis of the structure depends on uh, the you can say depends on the direction in which the by the structure is vibrating or the structure is ex i mean uh, uh, the direction of excitation okay so now uh, in case suppose we have made the two modes of vibration which are translating along x and y so in that case my global axis x and y will be uh, my principal axis of vibration right or principal axis of excitation but in case of irregular structures uh, uh, y shape v shape structures your x and y may not be the i mean the axis of excitation so in that case you have to find the actual principal axis of the structure and that actual principal axis of the structure you will be uh, getting by finding out the uh, i can say angle at which you are getting uh, maximum base shear so angle with respect to your uh, global axis right so this particular thing can be done in midas gen 2025 automatically by clicking on this auto search angle option right as of now in this particular lecture i will not be doing that uh, i will show you that later in a uh, separate uh, lecture so that you understand that uh, very well uh, today what i will be doing i will be defining the response spectrum load case in the conventional way so what i will do i'll be defining the response spectrum load uh, with uh, along x and y depending on our global axis right so i'll just name it as rsx okay rsx i'll keep the uh, axis as major and i'm considering that my zero degree that means my x axis is my major axis okay so i'm defining a uh, response spectrum load case at zero degree angle with respect to the major axis which is my x axis right so i'll keep it keep this as zero the scale factor initially it will be one uh, period modulation condition factor it will be one i need to select the function so it is this function is 1893 2016 with five percent damping 
in case you have different functions with different damping you can apply different damping uh, methods by using this option so you don't have to use this as of now in case you have different damping of uh, methods different functions and if you want to have interpolation between them them so we have this option interpolation of spectral data you can do the linear interpolation or you can also do the logarithmic uh, uh, interpolation right so as of now we don't have to do this uh, you can define the accidental eccentricity so in case you have uh, you can say dynamic uh, load or dynamic response spectrum load you do not have to have the uh, you can say design uh, 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 what should i say uh, when we have the uh, uh, design eccentricity when we define esi plus 0.5 uh, bi in that case there is a factor 1.5 which we multiply with the static eccentricity esi right so that 1.5 is basically dynamic amplification factor but as we are performing response spectrum uh, uh you can say uh, uh, analysis which is kind of it's a uh, uh, it's a dynamic mode of analysis so in that case you don't have to apply that uh, you can say 1.5 dynamic amplification factor right so if you see here in the accidental eccentricity if i click on these three dots you will find that the accidental eccentricity is considered as five percent okay you can also go for user defined but this this uh, automatic option uh, works very well right so i'll just click on okay and uh, now i will what i will do i'll click on add so the first one i have defined for the second one what i will do i'll keep this as measure okay so you can see here once i have added this is automatically major okay so you just have to define the angle with respect to the major axis that means the uh, the horizontal axis so i'll just change this to y and i will make it as 90 right i will make it as 90 and all the things will be the same and i'll click on add so i have defined two response spectrum cases in the conventional way uh, along our uh, global x and y axis one is rsx another one is rsy so one is at zero degree angle other one is a 90 degree angle with respect to the major axis where now the major axis is considered as the uh, uh, horizontal axis right so now we are done with defining the response spectrum case and if i just perform the analysis you can uh, you can see how it is been defined let me just analyze the program okay so once we are done i'll go to the result and i think i think i can see the deformation shape deformations deform shape i will select the load case rs x okay so you can see here as we have selected eccentricity so there are four cases created one is without eccentricity one is with eccentricity okay so this rsx if i see here dx and if i click on apply so you can see it is along x if i go to rsy okay without eccentricity okay dy and apply so you can see it is along y correct so this is the conventional way of defining the response spectrum load case but this major and minor axis option will or, or major and ortho axis option will give you an accurate angle at which you should apply the response spectrum case or in in that case you you may have to orient your structure along that principal axis direction okay so to get an optimum result so that i'll be discussing in our next lecture and we'll also discuss regarding the response spectrum basis scaling how we can do through maybe uh, the general way of scaling the response spectrum case itself or uh, we can also do it through our load combinations in the uh, uh, the software program so uh, we'll see this in our next lecture so the next lecture will be very important as we'll be discussing this major and ortho option okay which is actually very much required when you have a uh, irregular shape of structure okay so uh, this is because many of us confuse the global axis and the principal axis the global axis of the software program is not actually the principal axis of the so uh, structure okay the principal axis of the structure is the axis at which we are getting or the uh, the orientation of the axis at which we are getting maximum uh, base shear okay so that means the structure is actually vibrating along that particular axis not along x and y okay so as we have torsional mode of vibration as of now in the in the second mode of vibration you will see that the angle will be different from the y and x in case you have a very regular structure vibrating along x and y 
you may find uh, that the angle that uh, at which the response spectrum cases uh, case should be applied should be maybe almost equal to 0 and 90 okay so uh, let us let us keep this lecture up to here only we we uh, we have learned how to define response spectrum case in the conventional way in our next lecture we'll be learning how to define the response spectrum uh, cases with major and ortho option and we'll also understand we'll also try to interpret the results from those uh, options okay so thank you if you have any doubt you can always write me in the uh, comments and those who have already joined our uh, uh, whatsapp group for this particular uh, series uh, so you can you can always uh, ask me your questions in the whatsapp group itself if you want to join that whatsapp group the link is given in the description of this video you can always join that group and ask your queries there thank you and we'll see you in the next lecture